Virgin Galactic has completed its first commercial flight into space, realising a 19-year dream for Richard Branson's company. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Ignition. Flight Galactic 01 sent an Italian trio and three Virgin crew 85 kilometres above the Earth's surface on a 72-minute voyage. It makes Virgin the third company to offer commercial space flights behind Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin and Elon Musk's SpaceX. Virgin Galactic will open monthly flights to more than 800 customers who have already booked their seat from August. Danica DiGiorgio spoke with Virgin Galactic's Vice President of Government Affairs and Research Operations and astronaut in her own right, Sarisha Flandler. Sarisha, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us about the launch. So this is an incredible first flight, first commercial flight for Virgin Galactic. So it's a fully dedicated research flight. So it had three mission specialists from the Italian Air Force, as well as payloads uh, in Iraq on the spaceship that ran and conducted science experiments on board. So it was, a, it was the whole mission objective was to collect science and do research, not only to test technologies for future space exploration, but collect data that will eventually go to helping people on Earth better understand our planet and better understand the processes around us, which is just really exciting. And I believe that's the aircraft behind you. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. So behind me is VSS Unity, fresh from space just this morning. It's a reusable suborbital vehicle, so it's launched from a mothership, an aircraft. So right here from Spaceport America, we saw the launch, the release of the spacecraft behind me, which then completed the mission by traveling to space and then landed back on the runway with the payloads, with the mission specialists, and with an incredible amount of science and data for us to look at. Wow, this really is so exciting. How much preparation has gone into this moment? So it's been, you know, we have decades of flight test research and development behind us. So it's really an incredible moment to see the vehicle complete its first commercial flight. So that's the flight with customers on board. The training and preparation that came before it started a few months ahead of time as we do safety reviews on all the payloads and all the experiments that go on board. And then a couple weeks ahead of the flight, we started training the mission specialists and the researchers that conducted all the experiments on board. It's a huge team effort, so it's a huge historic milestone, not only for the Italian Air Force, but the entire Virgin Galactic team that helped prepare for this mission. It's a tremendous feat by the entire team. You touched on this before, though, but this was also a scientific mission. What more can you tell us? So the aim was, it's actually, it's interesting because this was a science mission that was curated by our customer, which is the Italian Air Force and the, set, uh, the CNR which, of Italy, uh, which is a research organization. So we're providing the capability to do science, but what's exciting is now our customer is driving what science is being done on board. So for the Italian Air Force, they did a quite a variety of experiments on board, looking at biomedical fields, looking at fluid dynamics, which is how fluids interact in microgravity, which has a lot of applications, not also including how uh, we look at how blood pumps in our heart on Earth. You know, there's, it's just a spectrum of research that they did on board that has multiple applications for space and, and on our planet, which is Again, I keep saying incredible, but there's no other way to describe this incredibly new capability for researchers in science to do repeatable and frequent science in the microgravity environment. What does this mean now for the future of space tourism? I think it's the access to space that is that, that uh, pivot point. Before, there was very few opportunities for people to go to space, whether it was for tourism purposes, for that space flight experience, or even for science and research. But now with repeatable and frequent access to space, you have a lot more people having the opportunity to go. And from a space tourism side, I, I, I hope I don't sound too mushy saying this, but the people that are gonna be going up to space are look different, are from different backgrounds, are from different communities, from the 600 plus people that have gone to space before. And all of them are gonna have this incredibly perspective and changing experience 
they're going to go back to their communities and in a small way make an impact. They could be the first astronaut, you know, children in that community meet. They could be using this perspective, you know, the change in perspective, seeing the earth with no borders to create initiatives in their own communities. It's just going to be such a profound downstream effect to see have more and more people go to space that come from different backgrounds that have not seen this, you know, this view before. It's an incredible industry and such an emerging industry as well. I've got to say a flight or a ticket will cost about 450,000 US dollars. So really, is it worth it? What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> Having personally seen the view and, and gone through that space flight experience, absolutely. And then again, on the science side, um, there's programs uh, at NASA and here in the US uh, that fund that science and that opportunity for researchers to be able to use this as another lab furthering their field. And I think that's actually just paradigm shifting that our vehicle is just another lab <laughs> that they can use to you know, do research just like they would do in a university by renting, you know, lab space of like a clean room. So I think if there's different opportunities and for science and research, I think it's absolutely valuable. Just finally, what's next? So we are starting, you know, we just kicked off our commercial operations. We've got over 800 uh, future astronauts that are, are excited to fly. So we're going to start flying for uh, space tourism purposes, as well as continue flights with our partners for research and science. Um, and this is that repeatable access to space uh, that I talked about before that is that, you know, pivot in what's going to be uh, an ROI on space technology investment and also just changing people's perspective of our own planet. So what's next? We're going to space again. Well, we're all very excited to see what comes next. What a fantastic feat this morning by you and the rest of the team. Sarisha Bandler, lovely to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It was so nice to talk to you.